Uh, good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. And... German idea came to me in such a um, unique way. I was asking the Lord, uh, what would what would you have me preach this week? And um, as usual, a song came into my head after much deliberation. Um, uh, Lin Linda Perry's uh, Born on Blondes, What's Up, and he's, and the Lord began to say, he, he began to say to me, um, I want the church to be asking what's, what's up, what's going on, and he's like, I want the church to be asking what's up. He says, I want the church to be asking what's going on, what's up, and all that stuff. And she, he said something straight, she, he said something straight to me. I said, isn't the church already asking that with, with the health crisis going on, with the financial crisis going on, with all the stuff going on? Aren't people asking uh, what's up and what's next already? He said yes, but I, I need them to be asking it uh, with precision, with purpose, and with passion. Um, he said not with panic. He said people have been asking that question with panic and with, oh my god, I don't know what to do. But he's like, I need people to start asking that for their lives, for their churches with um, precision and with with purpose and with passion, not with panic. Because when you ask things in a panic, you don't really want an answer, you want a solution right now. And he said, this is not about a solution. He said, this is about a, a paradigm shift. He said, he put it to me this way. He said, the church is was meant to be formed like a company, like a business. Um, and in most companies, you have the CEO, and then you have all kinds of directors, and then you have the frontline workers. So when it comes to a church, the God, the Lord, is the CEO. He's the chief executive officer of the church, which means everything comes from him, through him, and everything like that. And the pastors are the directors of their particular um, departments. So you have a marketing department, you have a arts department, you have a HR department, you have all of that stuff in a regular company. Whereas the, the churches are different uh, departments. And each department, although they're under the same or organization, have different functions. So the HR department has one function, the, um, the, the financial department has another function, the marketing department, department has another function. And all of these different departments help the organization to run. So now I know the church isn't really an organization, it is an organ organism and we move together as an organism. But he said, for the case of this example, think of uh, the church as a company. So God's the boss. Everything comes from him. And 
the pastors are the directors um, of the departments. Like they they take their they take their orders or their mandates from the boss, and every department has its own has the same function, but its own uh, way of dealing with that function. Or, sorry for all the banging, if you're hearing that, that somebody's picking something in my building. Uh, so, so every, every church is part of a, of the, the uh, structure of the company. And each department, although in the same company, although with the same focus, which is uh, Jesus and get, getting souls into the kingdom, has a different function, different ways of doing things. And e for each company, in, in each branch of the church, each pastor directs it differently according to his or her bent. But we all have the same focus. And the congregation is what we call the frontline workers. So, so after the pastors get their, get their mandates from God for the week, um, the congregation now is supposed to actually carry out what the the orders that uh, the director has got from the boss, and he said, he said, men, he said, churches after this pan, the um, churches in this pandemic. He said we've been doing well. He's very proud of the church and how we've stepped up in this pandemic. But we, we, he said, we haven't asked key questions like, what is the paradigm shift looking like, and what does, what does my church or, or or organization or my life, what what part do I have to play? He said there are key things that he he wants to. Uh, bring forth in each in each um, uh, in each part of the organization. Each church has a different mandate to play. Although the overall function of the church is the same, it's to bring lost souls into the kingdom. But how we do that? is different and he's like um he i don't want to screw this up um he's like also he said although he's very proud of his generals he's very proud of his generals to keep on preaching and spreading the word of god and doing all that but he's like that's not all I want from this pandemic. There are going to be changes that I need each pastor and each person for their own lives to look out for. He's like, I don't want it to be the same. It's like, it's like we're, we're saying that things will be different, but we're not, like, he's saying, um, we want things to be different, but we're at the same time scared for things to be different. So, he's like, there are new ways that I want to bring the church about, new things I want to, uh, to bring forth, um, from the people of God, but we are so focused on getting things back the same that we're not really, we, we say we want change, but we're afraid to embrace it. We're afraid to be open to it. We're afraid 
um, for us for us pastors, we're afraid to be uh, a different way of preaching and teaching, and we're afraid to bring. We're afraid because we don't know if it'll, if it'll work out. But he's saying, "Don't worry." He's saying, "Don't worry if it'll work out," because he said, I'll, "I'll put it his way." He said. That ain't up to you," <laughs> he said. "That ain't up to you. Your job as uh, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles is to just uh, bring forth the word." He said. But I, he said, I need things to change. He's like, no longer can you not just. Can we just? Go back to church as usual, and and we often say that, but but I think we're too afraid, um, afraid to embrace it, and uh, the Lord's agreeing with me in that is that we're too, we say we want it, but we're too afraid to embrace it. We can't wait to get back to church as usual because it's what we know, but it's not what God wants. He wants. He wants this pandemic, all these deaths, all this job loss, all this everything to be worth something. Um, and he wants us to ask very specifically um, in our personal lives, for our churches, for our homes, what part do we have to play? Because I'll talk to pastors for a minute. There is a specific role that your church, your ministry, your specific uh, thing has to play. And he wants you to ask very specific questions about what this new season is going to look like. Um, he said, he said, he said, he showed me this one time. He showed me um, pastors going in their room for 30 days with just a pen and a calendar. <laughs> he said, and just asking specific questions about the months of the year, what he wants. And, you know, it could be scary to do things like that because we've always done it our way, but, like, he just wants something different. I don't know, like something is something is going on and I think we want things to be the same so bad and we want things to be different because the idea of difference is better than the application of difference. I'll say it. The idea of difference, the idea of change is much more thrilling than the application of difference or change. Because if we change things, if things are different, well then will we have to hire more staff? Will we need more money? What will we need? And he'll say, and he's saying to me right now, I'll provide the resources. All I need is the hands and a willing heart. And we say we're willing, but we're but we're afraid for things to change. We're afraid for things to be different. Uh, we're afraid of different and unique uh, ways of preaching and teaching and worshiping and all that stuff. And the core, but he said, the core of any ministry will always be Christ. He said, the core of any ministry will always be Christ, but the methods will change. He said, but don't be afraid of that change. Don't be afraid of what he's showing you. Don't be afraid of what he wants for your church. Don't be afraid of, you know, the wh what he's staring, staring you into. Because I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, the days of, okay, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but help me, help me, help me, um, the days of standing at a pulpit and preaching that way are over, and um, 
I don't know. I see a more. Oh, I see a more. Ah, uh, oh God. I see a more. Together kind of approach. I see pastors uh, sitting in the midst of worship teams instead of. Not worship teams, but in the midst of congregations, teaching them and preaching the way Jesus did. Because Jesus, if you look at Jesus, he never stood at a pulpit. He never stood at a pulpit ever. He sat with people. He talked with people. He just exposed truth using stories. And I see that with pastors. I see pastors sitting in the midst of congregations and just sitting down with people and discussing with people and sharing the word of God with people and that um, and I see people coming to Christ in droves because of that. I see artists like just just writing songs that really affect the world and not our our worship songs that we do now, but just songs that bring God into life. And I see, I see Christian songs about uh, divorce, about how to manage your money, about marriage, and yes, even about sex and all of those issues that we're facing on a daily basis. The Lord wants to come into life. We don't have to bring life to the Lord. He wants to come into life. He wants to sit with us. He wants to talk with us. And he said, the days of, of the pulpit and preachers uh, preaching at you, he said, they're over. And I'm, I, I don't know what this thing will look like. It's scary because we haven't done anything like this before. But he's saying, don't worry, trust me, and oh, it's just awesome what I'm seeing. I'm seeing uh, people just coming to Christ in robes. I'm seeing uh, preaching being mixed with art and uh, uh, storytelling and plays and all that. I'm seeing all that going on, and I'm like, oh, Father, please. Um... And it's almost too much for my head. Um, but, yeah, so he just wants us to ask the questions. What's going on? And, and he, uh, he wants church leaders, to, he, uh, he wants uh, non-church leaders to ask um, two questions. Uh, what's going on and what does that have to do with my life and what do I need to do to prepare and he says, um, church leaders, he wants to, wants you to ask, what's going on with my church? And the church that you've given to me, the slice of this company that you've given to me, and what, what place in the paradigm does my church have? And how do we execute it? And just, when you talk to him, don't just, do it in prayer just haphazardly. Have a calendar, pastors. Have a calendar. Have a notebook. Have a phone and just wait for his answer. answers. And he'll be very specific. When he was constructing the tabernacle, um, when he was um, telling Noah um, how to build the ark he was very specific and he said he wants to be that specific again he knows your church he knows you he knows your church's place in the big scheme of things and he knows what he wants you to do and and don't be alarmed with how specific he's going to get with you when you when you um come before him with not only the question, but a, a calendar and a, a notebook just to go through the months of the year. And if he says, I, I don't, if he, 
if you've been doing something forever and ever and ever, and he said, I don't, I don't want that anymore, take it out and know that he has something else that he wants to do in that time. Um, if he wants a social media fast um, in place of a regular fast, um, he'll tell you. And, like, he just wants to speak to his directors. And he wants us to stop ho hoping that things won't get back to normal, but secretly wanting them to, because we don't know what else to do. We, we don't know how else to um, conduct church, because we've always had our liturgy, we've always had the same type, type of worship songs, we've always done the same things the same way, but he wants something di different, and he knows you, he knows uh, your congregation, he knows what he's doing with you. And plus, for non-pastors, he knows your life, and he knows what he wants to do with it. He wants to bring up books in you. He wants to bring up creativity in you. He wants you to, he wants you to get new strategy for your children. He wants you to get new strategy for your marriage. He wants to give you strategy for your life. But you need to be open and ask the hard questions. You need to ask what's going on, and you need to ask it not in panic, but you need to ask it with passion, uh, with precision, and with purpose. Uh, and you need to be precise about what you need to what want to know. And this is for everybody. When I say he wants you to ask it with precision, I. I, I met, mean he wants you to ask it um, being very specific about what you want to do. Like, do we do we have the how is this social media past thing supposed to work when we're all online? Uh, you know, how are these new concepts supposed to work? Or whatever, and he'll give you the specific de details. He may point you to books about creative learning. He, he may just give you the specific details, or he may point you to friends in that specific area. How does this work? Or, you know, you know, or he may give you something totally new. Just open your ears. He wants open ears and open hearts in this season. And don't be afraid, just know that he'll be with you. And whatever he wants you to do, he'll give you the resources for it. He'll give you the know-how for it. He'll give you the people for it. And you don't need to be afraid. So, yep, that's what he wants me to say today. So I'll see... I'll see you when I see you. I might come on tomorrow. Who knows? It's whatever God wants. Your fear is not greater than his plan. So I know this new thing may be fearful, but your fear, whatever it is, people won't show up, it's too crazy or whatever. 
the ideas he's giving me is too crazy or whatever, or I don't have the resources to do that, it's not greater than his plan. He won't give you something without without a plan to make it happen. All you have to do is ask. And I say, hey, 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 hey. I say, hey, what's going on? And I say, hey, 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 hey. I say, hey. What's going on? That's, that's all you have to ask for. And that's funny. That song by Linda Perry is all about um, her just searching for what's next. Um, after 25 years, she's just asking the question, uh, what's next? Um, she said, I cry sometimes when I'm lying, lying in bed, I can't get it all out what's in my head, and he, she's talking about the confusion in her mind and her head about her life, and then she, she's like asking the question, what's going on, and he wants us to ask that same question, and then, uh, he's just waiting for the church to uh, globally ask that question and globally talk about changes. Um, he said there is indeed a paradigm shift and we need to get um, instruction about where we fit in this paradigm shift, where our specific department, aka church fits, and where our world fits in this paradigm shift. And he said he will give instruction for anybody who will listen. And yeah, that's all. And he said, get ready for the non-traditional. He said, I will use things, I will mix and match things, and I will do it for my, for my glory. He said, I will mix and match styles of music, I will uh, use certain things that you wouldn't have any idea about using together. He said, I will mix and match sermons with uh, songs and uh by a secular artist that you wouldn't even know of, and that will trigger the people that like those sec secular artists to come into the kingdom. And oh my gosh, it's just going to be so wonderful. It's going to be good. It's just, it's already good. He's already proud of us. He just wants us to ask what's next, and he wants us to do it with pass passion and precision and purpose. And what I mean by 
purpose. He wants us to do it. Like, not, not, oh, what's that for? He wants us to um, ask it with purpose. The purpose meaning, I know it will change, but how it will change. And with passion, he wants us to ask it like we mean it. Like we mean it. So he wants us to, to ask it with passion, position, and purpose. He's not afraid of your questions. And he will give you answers. Either through um, talking to you directly or through books or through even, even uh, songs or dreams or whatever. He will give you next steps. You just have to look and listen. And he will probably... He will use uncommon ways to do it. So get ready, church. There is there is something really wonderful afoot, and I don't know what it's gonna be, but I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it's going to be exciting, and it's already exciting. But the Lord is not finished with us yet. I said, hey, what's going on? And that qu question will be the catalyst for something you can then never bring them. You think church went up during Corona? Because just people were bored. No, it's the catalyst. And now we have to ask the Lord with passion, with passion, position, and purpose what's next and how we implement what he wants to do. Let's not miss this moment. Let's grab it by the horns and take it for what it's worth. 